Create a countdown like this for your interest in. Hi YouTube, welcome to another video. In this episode, I will walk you through on how to get started with a basic countdown timer. And I have to say, the countdown mode includes access to some powerful features. But before we look at those, we need to know how to get the basic countdown timer up and running. Let's head over to the script UI and we can get there via the menu items by clicking on tools and then scripts. And that will open up the script UI. Now we can see here in the left hand corner, there should be an index with all the installed scripts. In this case, there's only one. Make sure you select it so you can configure the properties. In this video, we will be working with version 5.1 of the advanced timer. And we will start with the script in its default state. In the default state, the timer mode will be set to count up. And today we want to work with the countdown mode. So let's change that from count up to countdown. And then let's change the layout from basic to advanced. And then finally, we want to work with the timer settings. So let's change that from hidden to expanded. Now, once we make that selection, we have to first define a timer source. And to do that, select the timer source from the list here. Now, if your source is not in here, you might want to just hit the refresh button and that should show up here. In this case, I'm going to use timer one. And once we make that selection, you will see that new properties become available. The next property we want to configure is countdown type. If we select it, we will see that there are two options available. One is a specific date and time, while the other is hours, minutes, and seconds. I'm going to show you the difference between those two and how they work and how to configure them. You may recall in a previous video, we went through timer format. So all of those settings will apply here in this video as well. I'm just going to move this over so that we can see the timer. And here we can see is the timer available. And we're going to work first with hours, minutes, and seconds and show you how that works. So with that option selected, you will notice that there are three input fields here. And the first is hours, the second minutes, and then seconds. And the minute you make an adjustment here, you will see that it pops up over on the timer. Let's demonstrate this in action. And we're going to do that by changing the seconds. We will set it to about five. And you will notice once I make the adjustment, it will show on screen. We're going to head over to the start button. And once I click it, you will see it will count down. Now, when it gets to zero, the text source for the timer will be hidden. And that's just a setting we can change. And I will show you that in a little bit later. The second mode that we want to look at is the specific time and date. And a use case for that would be, for example, a New Year's party. You want to count down to that time. Let's try that out. And we can do that by setting the time for that. And we'll make this January 2024. And the day will be the 1st of January. And the hours will be 0, 0, and 0. So that's going to be exactly New Year's. Okay, and let's show this text there. It's important to know that this time here is going to be synced to your local time. That would be the time on your computer. The next two properties we will look at address the issue to ensure that the text that is following the days unit is rendered correctly. The text must either read day or days depending on the numeric value preceding the text. The two properties that are provided to fill this requirement are the date text format. And you're able to adjust those as needed. And then finally, I just want to point out that these two properties are only available if specific date and time property is selected. Let's look at events that are available for when the timer expires. 
To look at those, let's change the countdown type back to hours, minutes, and seconds. And we'll leave it on five seconds to make it manageable for this video. And to configure a time expire event, we want to go to this property here. And we can see the default value is select. And when that value is selected and the timer runs out, then the text source for the timer will be hidden. Now, if you want to change the event, there are some of it that's all available. I'm just going to run them through by you. The default is select and then the next one is a timer end text. Now, if we select that one, you will see that a new property becomes available and that is a text input field for to display some form of text when the time expires. For example, when the time expires, you just wanted to show an empty timestamp then let's put in an empty timestamp there and if we zoom out and we start the timer then we'll see that when it expires it shows that empty timestamp let's say you want to put a custom text message in there you can just type it what you want and let's reset the timer and let's run it again when it gets to zero, it will show that text message. Let's delete this out and look at the next available options. This one here that says select list is not selectable. You will see if you select it, it will just revert back to select. This is just a marker to show you that there are new options available. And the three options that's available under select lists is source list, scene list, and auto list. Now I will go in more depth in another video to show some of these advanced features. But just as a quick overview, if the source list is selected, then the user can define specific sources that it wants to make visible when the timer runs out. And the scene list, specific scenes visible when a timer runs out. And then auto list works by basically placing any source into a nested scene or a group. And if you select that, then it will make those visible. But again, I will discuss this feature in further detail in an upcoming video. This last one here, it shows a select scene. I'm going to add here scene new scene and just to show that we're in a new scene I'm just going to put in a color field a color source and we'll make it a nice happy yellow fit the screen there we go all right let's go back to the script move this out of the way so if we select the option for select scene you can see that new scene is not available there. So what we need to do is refresh this. And we can do it by clicking this refresh button here. And if we go back. Now we can see this new scene is available in the list. So let's select that. Now what should happen is the minute this timer runs out it should change the scene to that new scene. So let's check it out. There we go. It's now transitioned to the new scene. And with that, it brings us to the end of this video. In the next video, we will dive into the advanced settings for the countdown script. If you have any questions or need support with the script, you're welcome to reach out in the forums. I will, as always, leave a link in the description below. If you found this video useful, please consider to subscribe to the channel. It's free and it will help to grow the community. And I would love to hear from you. So come say hi in the comments. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.